Focus is something we all struggle with, and it's an interesting concept. Most things get easier with more time spent, but with focus, the longer we do it, the harder it becomes. Why is this? Well, as humans, we're novelty seeking. We like to shift our attention. Distractibility is entrained into our very DNA over millions of years of evolution. Once I realized and accepted this, I was able to hack it and use the human tendency for distraction to my advantage. And I used it to design a strategic study routine that allowed me to stay focused and study for 12 hours a day. And here's how I did it. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Shane and I'm a recently qualified doctor and neuroscience supervisor at Cambridge University. And today I wanna to talk about how I designed a study routine that allowed me to stay focused and study effectively for 12 hours a day without burning out. By following this plan for a month before exams, I was able to perform the best I've ever been able to in my six years at Cambridge University. So first I'll begin by setting the scene and giving you guys a bit of context on what my actual 12 hour study routine looked like. And this is the routine that I followed a month before my second year exams which is kind of infamous for being one of the most grueling years. Then after this I'm going to go on and talk about the five core principles that actually allowed me to design this study routine so that I could actually stay focused for that long and study effectively. Now before I go on I want to make it absolutely clear that I don't want you to take away from this video that you need to be studying for 12 hours. What I actually want you to take away from this video are the five core principles that's going to allow you to remain focused and study effectively for longer. So anyway with that disclaimer out of the way let's get on with it. So my waking day would start around 6.30 a.m. and I'd go to bed around 11.30 p.m. So that gives me 17 waking hours and seven hours of sleep. Now in that 17 working hours, I'd have eight one and a half hour study sessions, which adds up to 12 hours of study. And I also had seven breaks of varying lengths, which all together added up to five hours of breaks. Now let me go on and explain what I actually did for each of the study sessions and each of the breaks. So in terms of the study sessions, I would study neuroscience, pathology, and pharmacology for two one and a half hour sessions each. And for human reproduction, it would only be one one and a half hour session because it was a shorter course, therefore had less content to get through. And the last study session, I would just do past exam questions and mock them. And that would make up my eight study sessions. Now, during these first seven study sessions, before I actually sit down at the desk, I actually knew exactly what the lectures I want to cover within each session. And what I'd do within each of these study sessions is that I'd sit down, open up the lecture material, and then I'd read the subheading and cover the text below. Then I would kind of recall as many facts as possible that I could from memory, and then I'd uncover it and check if I had recalled most of the facts. And if I hadn't, I'd read through it and see if I can do it again. And then I'd basically carry this out until I got to finishing all the lectures that I wanted to within that session. Now, often I'd finish with about 10 minutes to go. And in that last 10 minutes, what I'd do is I'd do some past exam questions, as many as time would allow, and I'd mock them. Now, in terms of breaks, each served a purpose. There were four utility breaks and three physical breaks. So the four utility breaks were 30 minutes each for breakfast, lunch and showering and an hour for dinner at the end of the day. Then the three physical breaks were time allocated for physical activity and that would be 30 minutes for sit-ups and 30 minutes for free weights and an hour and a half dedicated to actually go to the gym. Now that I've set the scene and given you guys a bit of context, I'll go on and talk about the five core principles behind the design of this study routine and why this particular routine allowed me to stay focused and study so effectively. So the first principle is something I call forecasting. Like I mentioned before, one of the key aspects of the study session is that I knew exactly what I wanted to cover before I actually sat down at the desk. Now, I didn't use any complex algorithms or any difficulty ratings to design this. Essentially, I went from the first to the last lecture and I cycled over and over again. I'll give you an example of what I actually mean by this. So let's say for example, it's day one. From 6.30 to 8 a.m. I would study neuroscience and during these one and a half hours, I'd study neuroscience lectures one, two, and three. Then in the afternoon at 3.30 to five, I'd come and do neuroscience lectures four, five, and six. Then the next day, day two, at exactly the same time slot, I do lectures seven, eight, and nine in the morning. Then I do lectures 10, 11, and 12 in the afternoon. Then I'll go on like this until I finish the lecture course and I'd repeat it once I got to the end. Now, throughout the day, this will also happen to the other subjects, so pathology, human reproduction, and pharmacology. Essentially, this system was my practical and intuitive way of doing space repetition. But importantly, knowing exactly what I'm going to cover well in advance of actually doing it meant that there 
there was no time wasted deliberating or decision making at the exact moment where I want to study. I found that by forecasting, it maximized my efficiency and minimized the amount of time wasted on the actual day of studying. On top of this, forecasting actually relieved a lot of anxiety. I knew well in advance that if I stuck to this routine, that I would cover all the lectures at least three times over before my actual exam. So the takeaway from this when you're designing your own study routine is to forecast well in advance. Now I don't mean kind of plan what you're going to do for tomorrow, I mean plan what you're going to do for the pretty much the next month or the large chunk of time that's yet to come. This will absolutely minimize the amount of time that you waste on a day-to-day -day basis and it will also relieve a large degree of anxiety that you have around this whole, oh, am I gonna be ready for the exams? Would I have covered everything I want to? And it will also contribute to habit formation. So the next principle I call operative shifting. And this was the core principle that allowed me to hack my human tendency for distraction. Instead of fighting it, I essentially fed the beast and made it work for me. So how does this work? Well, operative shifting actually has two parts. The first part I call intersubject shifting or shifting between different subjects. And the second part I called form shifting, essentially splitting up each study session with breaks in between. Now, I'll explain this in a bit more detail. So the first part of operative shifting, like I mentioned, is intersubject shifting. So essentially what that means is I'd never study the same subject in close succession. So like I mentioned before, if I studied neuroscience in the morning from 6.30 to 8, what I'd do is I'd study different subjects until I got to the afternoon and that's when I would repeat neuroscience and do a different set of lectures. So essentially I would allow my brain this capacity to be distracted and move from one subject to the next. I'm feeding my human tendency to want to shift my attention and move on. So this concept of interleaving has been shown to actually improve our retention and ability to focus. And even intuitively, I could feel whenever I started a new subject, my focus was refreshing. This is kind of the same principle by which the YouTube videos that you watch that manage to hold your attention are the ones that tend to have loads of frequent jump cuts, moving from one scene to another to another. In the same way, I use that tactic to hack my tendency for distraction and allow it to be distracted by moving on from one subject to the next. Now, the second part of operative shifting, like I mentioned, is called form shifting. That essentially refers to breaking up my study sessions with purposeful breaks. So I would never follow a study session with another study session straight away. I would always take a purposeful break, either a utility break or a physical break. I found that having these purposeful breaks between study sessions gave me enough time to mentally rest and recharge my focus. And form shifting also gave me an opportunity to change the scene. It was my opportunity to move away from the desk and go do some physical activity or go use the bathroom or go have lunch, dinner, whatever. So just like I mentioned before with the jump cuts from one scene to another, this was essentially allowing me to do the same thing and cut the scene from just looking at the desk or the wall and go to a different part of my room or a different part of the accommodation. So in terms of takeaways for designing your own study routine, I highly recommend incorporating inter-subject shifting and form shifting when designing your study routine because let's be real, we're not going to be able to suppress years of evolution that's made us distractible. We need to feed it, but we need to feed it in such a way that we're actually going to make it work for us. So the next strategy I want to talk about is called purposeful breaks. Now I've talked about form shifting and how you should split up your study sessions with breaks already, but what I want to talk about now is actually what I mean by purposeful breaks. Essentially what I mean by this is the breaks weren't vague. They weren't just like look at your phone, catch up on social media. They each served a specific purpose, like go away and have breakfast, go away and have lunch, or go away to the gym. Now I'll go into a bit more detail on how I actually split up these breaks into utility breaks and physical breaks. So the four utility breaks that I took, breakfast, lunch, showering and dinner were essentially fundamental things that I had to do within the day. By actually incorporating these tasks strategically throughout my day, I managed to use them as breaks. Another key aspect to this was strategic timing. Not all of my breaks would be the same length. For example, with the utility breaks, my breakfast, lunch and showering would be 30 minutes each. I found that this time was just enough to do the task that I wanted to do. But my dinner, I gave myself an hour. Now, that was way more time than I needed to actually eat dinner, but I also a video called home. So not only was I strategically using utility activities as breaks, but I was also strategically timing them so that I had 
kind of little pockets of motivation throughout the day. I was like, oh cool, I have dinner to look forward to, I can video call home, as well as enjoy a bit of a longer break. Now, the second category of breaks that I took were called physical breaks. This was essentially time allowed for me to carry out some sort of physical activity, sit-ups, free weights, or go to the gym. I found that planning in physical activity provided me not only with a degree of mental rest, but also a degree of physical stimulation, such that it boosted my focus and my ability to recharge that focus. And I also strategically varied the form of exercise that I was doing. So like I mentioned, I was doing sit-ups in the morning, gym in the middle, and then free weights in the afternoon. And this contributed to my sense of progression because I was doing different things. It wasn't just the same thing over and over again. And by shifting between different forms of exercise, I was also feeding my natural tendency to want to be distracted and shift my attention from one to another. And just as before, I strategically varied the timings. For example, the morning sit-ups and the evening free weights would each be 30 minutes long and then the middle gym session would be an hour and a half. I found that having this longer hour and a half acted as a divider for my day. I had a morning session, then there was a big split, which was the gym, and then the evening session. So this basically contributed to not only my sense of progression, but again, gave me a pocket of motivation, something to look forward to in the morning, to actually get to in the middle of the day, because gym is something that I actually did enjoy going to. So the takeaway from this for your own study routine is to design purposeful breaks throughout the day and strategically time them. You also need to incorporate some degree of physical activity, which will help with motivation, mental health, and focus, which all together is going to allow you to study more effectively for longer. So the next principle that helped me design this study routine was technology limitation. This essentially refers to the way I severely limited the amount of technology that was involved in my study process or study workflow. Almost everything I was studying from was a physical paper. None of my notes were actually on a laptop or a tablet or any electronic device. The only piece of technology that I would allow on my desk would be an electronic tablet that had no social media apps, just an internet explorer like Google Chrome that allowed me to just search up certain things that I wasn't sure about on the spot. Alongside this, I also put away my phone next to the bed far away from my reach. And I found that severely limiting the amount of technology that was involved in my studying process massively helped me escape procrastination and counterproductive distractions. Now, I'm only human, so at the beginning and end of every purposeful break, I would actually go and check my phone and catch up on whatever thing I'd missed. But as soon as my study session started, I'd put my phone so far away from me that the friction would just be too high. And even if I had that urge, it would stop me from going over and picking up the phone. Now, doing this was fairly easy in my second year of university. Now, times have progressed quite drastically to a point that I actually couldn't replicate this in this day and age, mainly because I heavily rely on my laptop and other technology to carry out my workflow because I've actually moved to a paperless system. But the fundamental principles are still translational. For example, when you're studying your own study routine, you should make sure your phone or whatever social media device that you use is as far away from you as possible. Increase that friction between you and the phone and procrastinate. And another thing that you can do to limit procrastination on your laptop or any study device is to create a separate study profile. Most laptops allow you to have more than one profile. So essentially what I recommend is have one that you use day to day and then have one that you use just for studying. So basically the study profile should only have an Internet Explorer type thing like Google Chrome and just your study notes and materials, nothing else. And also put your laptop, phone, tablets, everything on do not disturb. Minimize the chance that you actually can be drawn away from your study session and be distracted. Now, the last principle I wanna talk about is called contact minimization. And this is unfortunately the saddest and most difficult principle to implement. But for me, it was the most necessary, just because my biggest weakness was social distractibility. During this one month before my exams, I completely cut my friends out to a point that I wouldn't go to any social events, I wouldn't go for dinner, I wouldn't meet up with them. You know, I'd still keep in touch over text or FaceTime or whatever, but I wouldn't actually go to physically meet them. I found that doing this gave me complete freedom and control over my day. I could be brutally inflexible, not having to worry about other people's timings. I found that having this complete control over my day where I didn't fear any distractions or even expect any distractions to pop up allowed me to study so effectively and remain focused. Now, even though this was pretty effective, I'm pretty sure I couldn't have maintained it for more than a month without it affecting my mental health. And as a result, this is the one principle I don't actually recommend you take from me and implement. But what I do recommend is having a degree of control over your day. Now sure, what I did to achieve that was to essentially cut off my friends for that one month period. But what I would now recommend is to do something like collaboratively coming up with particular breaks that everyone agrees on and everyone's aware of. And importantly, be accountable for it. So if you agree to chill with this friend for 
you know, half an hour or an hour, stick to it and then go away and resume your study session. So take contact minimization to mean have productive relationships with your friends so that both parties are aware that you need to study and are mindful of it. So try using these five principles when you're next planning your study routine and see if it works for you. I'm pretty sure implementing these five principles is going to allow you to stay focused and study more effectively for longer. And if you'd like more information on effective study tips then definitely check out both of these videos and if you found this video useful don't forget to like and smash that subscribe button but that's it from me for today and I'll see you guys next time.